in, in designing this project, we, we were looking for uh, a strong underlying concept. So mm. we have the concept of uh, living in the park, right? right. Housing in the park. But on a kind of social sustainability level, because of Singapore's aging population, you know, I'm glad that we're able to, to work on the multi generation housing. Yeah. Yeah, I think the overlying concept, I think if you look at the bigger picture here, is that Dawson is really one of the older estates in Singapore. And if you remember Queenstown, yeah. it was one of the estates in the old Queenstown. You know. So the land in this area was uh, vacated because we had uh, torn down some of the older blocks, rental flats as well as us. So I think the overall thing is that we wanted to see how we can rejuvenate this whole area, uh, put in, as you said, the concept of housing in a park and to stretch this idea of see how we can integrate greenery with housing. Right. And of course, family and community is very important. So I think you can see with your you know, inputs and your design, how we have realized some of these concepts. Yeah. Right. The, the challenge for us really was to take your brief of multi-generational housing, which has a social agenda. Mm -hmm and a policy agenda, and how do you then take that and make it into architecture? Yeah. So for me, it was really trying to think of the housing as individual modules, and then to be able to be flexible to combine the elderly studio units with uh, the other duplexes. So with the modular system, we're able to then express the program in a way into yeah. architecture. Yeah. I think it was very successful. We can really see from the facade even how you've interlocked the small units with either four-room flat or five-room flat. Right. And it's expressed very much in the architecture. So a lot of these ideas were generated from brainstorming with your team, yeah. but also from us scripting the day in the life of Mr. Tan or Mr. Lim. Because uh, <laughs> having not really lived in the HDB myself, I, I had to observe and, and you know, we drafted like, uh, okay, at 6.30, you wake up and so on, the school bus comes. comes. You bring your kids down, your grandparents, so on, do Tai Chi. So we kind of reimagine, and the program was also generated by those scenarios, a day in the life of. Yeah, that's very interesting because it, it, yeah. it does help us to design for the people yeah. once you script it, right? Script and, it, and we know and what, what people what do, doing. yeah. That's right. And observing uh, the users, you see in the early mornings, towards the evenings, a lot of people will stroll and then seamlessly go on to the canal park, mm. the linear park. I hear many people walk even in the linear park, even yeah. from other areas of Singapore. So I think they do truly enjoy this space. One of the other things that uh, HDB does is to plan holistically. Uh, it's not just living here, but also amenities like uh, food. It's, it's master plan to vicinity. So just across the street, you have a, a food court. Food court. It's just literally 100 meters away that supports this. Uh, development yeah yeah so the role of HDB is really being the master planner and also look at the whole urban design of the whole area this would not be easily implemented if not for policy you know when we are talking about the kind of multi general living we are pairing uh, an L-shaped duplex sectional with an elderly unit mm. and that comes from policy when they come and there are three generations that apply yeah. then they get the flat yeah, yeah. right and uh, it's designed in such a way that uh, both units are autonomous, but then there's an uh, interconnecting link at the top of the stair with two doors, like a connecting yeah. room, so that when both people want to interact, they have both doors open. Yeah. So I think that's a, a yeah. good idea, but to actually implement it requires yeah. top-down yeah. policy. Yeah, I think uh, we have taken your concept, right? And it's been quite successful, this multi-generation living space. And now actually HDB has implemented a policy much wider. We have a multi-generation priority scheme where we have um, not necessarily linked together and interlocked as you have successfully done, but also to design blocks where smaller units are in the same floor or in the same block as larger units. And we allow the elderly parents as well as the younger couples to apply for flats together so they can actually choose their units. Some people like to live very close to each other. Some people say, no, I don't want to live so close to my parents, but maybe on a different floor. We give people a lot more choices now of how they can pair their units. Uh, 
Once we had the concept of using the modules to express the tower, uh, the other big idea that, that we had was really re-looking at uh, car parking, <laughs> right? Yeah. And in this case, we have kind of centralized the car parking into a long linear block that becomes actually this uh, kind of a roof garden, mm -hmm. communal roof garden that links each of the blocks mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And on the side of this car park block, I think using the landscape to tear it down. So the idea now becomes the car park is a hill block, a small hill. Then with these modules that then stack to run. Mm -hmm. the, the landscape then yeah. becomes a communal area that ties yeah. the skin. Yeah. I think it's successful because uh, we wanted this housing in the park, right? And I think the way you interpreted it was that there are different layers of green and even the car park itself becomes another layer of green. And the idea of community as well because the car park now also becomes a community space. Right. HDB's mission is not just building housing, right? It is also to create a whole environment and the main thing is that we're building for the people. And our people are of all, you know, generations, uh, old people, young people, uh, even people from outside. And we don't want to have a fenced development. So I think you realise that, you know, the whole of the Dawson area, uh, we don't have fence. And uh, the Alexandra cannot actually link everybody together. And this is part of a bigger picture of how you provide the fit spaces for the people. And I think people enjoy coming to this project even they are from outside, right, to enjoy the spaces here as well. I think when we first visited the site, we realised that this uh, former canal, which is a linear park, was a big part of the context. So we wanted to just take the park seamlessly and then take it over the car park and down on the other side. So in essence, we're bringing the park up to the fourth level and then further up to the sky terrace. So the idea of the housing in the park is really uh, pushed through, not just horizontally, but also vertically. Yeah, and I, I think we can see many layers of green. Uh, the ground plane, where you have a large lawn for people to use, right. as well as uh, the car park itself becomes a very green, iconic sort of a building. As well as the, if we look up the many of these sky decks, where also there's greenery on the upper levels. Car park is an important component in uh, public housing. It used to be surface car park, and then it became a standalone block. I think over here, the car park becomes a spine that integrates all the tower blocks. And the idea that you don't have to just walk on the inside, but create that zone, the green zone between the car park and the horizontal landscape, people can actually yeah. walk from the car park down to the various levels to the park or the other way around. In, in, in that sense, landscape is given priority. I think what is satisfying for HDB uh, is that we've seen this successfully done and also a lot of people using the spaces. I think as we look around, there are joggers, families with prams, uh, even the elderly uh, exercising. So I think it's very successful That's in that right. sense. Yeah. I mean, when the owners start to use the space and even kind of uh, uh, integrate their own uh, hobbies. For example, the community garden is one innovation. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you design space for a certain use, but then they adapt it. If you look at that structure, that structure came about because we were discussing how the void decks usually are used for weddings as well as you know. Here, I think we attempt to separate them sectionally. These are for community uh, film screenings or weddings, and underneath the triangulation, where in basic it could be for funerals. But most of the time it's used for parties. Yeah. I do hear that people do use it for birthday parties, yes. you know, this yes. space. So I think the community has accepted the design and they have used it uh, for their for themselves. Right. And you notice that 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 main circulation, we thought of it as uh, main street, but that is the heritage walk. So when the residents move along that spine, they they get to understand the mm. history of the place mm. and the history of HDB. Yeah. I think one of the concepts and programming we had for this whole area was that we want to bring back a bit of the history of Dawson because Dawson was one of the older estates in Singapore. Of course, we did look at presidents because there's a lot of uh, architects in the past, prominent ones that mm. have actually worked in public housing. So most architects would enjoy the chance to do that. And the idea of the modularity 
uh, and idea of housing actually, uh, you know, was well uh, studied by Le Corbusier mm, okay. in the Marseille, in the Unité, Unité block. Mm. The idea that the plasticity of space, uh, you're able to create a new type of living and, and to put all the amenities in one block. Mm. So we have taken that, that very idea uh, and, and kind of turned it sideways instead of over, over mm. interlocking on the cross section, we put it to the longitude okay. section. And then we have teased it apart for ventilation. Mm -hmm. So we have taken the idea of a president and adapted it to a tropical climate. Mm -hmm. This is also a sustainable project, right? We have uh, drip irrigation, we have solar panels to drive all right. the lighting in the common area, yeah. uh, lead free paints, uh, the bioswells, uh, rainwater harvesting. Yeah. So in many ways, I think it's the most one of the most interesting housing projects we've done. In that case, uh, also this project won several international games. Yeah. Because it's beyond just housing. There's an overarching social agenda. Yeah. In many ways, it is truly green. Uh, the rainwater har harvesting, the bioswells, uh, all these were truly implemented. Yeah. It's not just greenwashing. I mean, there are yeah. projects <laughs> where we say it's sustainable and green. Yeah. But I think in this project, we really did push the limits. Yeah. I think when you talk about the bioswale, we also have this idea of creating biodiversity in this area. So if the old Margaret Drive, remember, it's expunged and then in, eventually it becomes an ecological corridor. And I think we've retained many of the trees there uh, to give this whole place some kind of ambience and already shaded, right? So I think there's something that we've successfully done together with exactly. the architects. Yeah. And in our landscape design, we try to reinforce uh, the existing foliage. We, wherever we can find here, we, we kind of enforce it by adding on. So you notice it's not a, a very uh, kind of cultivated landscape right, with a lot yeah. of flowers. Yeah, it it's yeah. really is just greenery from around this area. Yeah. yeah. So the idea of housing in the park is very clear. If, if you look through a little bit, um, and you can see the guy walking on the top. You know, the landscape permeates. It's not just going up this way. In between, there are pockets of light well, and there's ferns and many types of uh, trees that grow in between the building and the car park as well. Mm -hmm. I think with a new design, we always have a little bit of challenges here and there. I think the sky terraces were something that's new, yes. right? We had to fabricate it and lift it up. Right to create these sky terraces. But I think the, the result is quite successful. Exactly. The sky terraces are staggered. And in a way, the sky terraces kind of uh, binds and stitches the towers together. Mm. So overall, I think it helps in the composition. Yeah. And I think this gives us uh, a lot more confidence moving ahead that spaces for the community can be big ones or small ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in our new projects, we do have more sky terraces. We have sky decks and so on. So I think different architects will interpret differently. And so this is one of the ways that you've interpreted community spaces in the sky. I think this is really delightful. It, it is delightful in the sense that the feeling is that of a happy yeah, place, yeah, I think. I think so. Yeah. And uh, people sort of like own the space in the sense that they also use the space. You mentioned the community gardening. And they do come together and they meet other people. So I think that also helps to build up the community. Mm -hmm. And our surveys also have shown that, you know, every project we do surveys from the residents after we've completed. The high satisfaction level of this one also shows that this is a very successful project. Right. So uh, through design intervention, we don't need a lot of space to create delightful spaces.